In the spring, he left Susa for Ekbatana in Medea, and there, after he had dealt with the most pressing of his concerns, he once more turned his attention to plays and spectacles, since 3,000 players had arrived from Greece. At this time, it happened that Hephaestion had caught a fever, and being a young man who was accustomed to a soldier's life, he could not bear to remain on a strict diet. No sooner had his physician Glaucus gone off to the theatre than he sat down to breakfast, devoured a boiled fowl, and washed it down with a great cooler full of wine. His fever quickly mounted, and soon afterwards he died. Alexander's grief was uncontrollable. As a sign of mourning, he gave orders that the manes and tails of all horses should be shorn, demolished the battlements of all the neighbouring cities, crucified the unlucky physician, and forbade the playing of flutes or any kind of music for a long time, until finally an oracle was announced from the temple of Ammon, commanding him to honour Hephaestion and sacrifice to him as a hero. To lighten his sorrows, he set off on a campaign, as if tracking down and hunting of men might console him, and he subdued the tribe of Cossians, massacring the whole male population from the youths upwards. This was turned to sacrifice to the spirit of Hephaestion. He determined to spend 10,000 talents on the funeral and the tomb for his friend, as he wished the ingenuity and originality of the design to surpass the expense he was especially anxious to employ Stasicrates, as this artist was famous for his innovations, which combined an exceptional degree of magnificence, audacity, and ostentation.